Well, hi there, boys and girls. Today we're going to take a look at some more Taylor series. And we're going to do some more manipulation with known power series. Remember, you're supposed to know e to the x, sine of x, and cosine of x, what they are, centered at zero. So you need to know their Maclaurin series. So let's practice this again. The Maclaurin series for e to the x, we want the first four non-zero terms. That means none of the terms can be zero, and we also need the general term. So we're going to say that e to the x is equal to, from memory, 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial. And I have 1, 2, 3, 4 non-zero terms. Now we're going to do plus dot dot dot. And now we're going to write the general term. And I'm not going to commit myself to a sigma. I'm just going to say the general term is x to the n increasing powers of x over n factorial. Memorize this. You're going to save yourself a lot of time. So now let's use our answer in A to find the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x minus 1 over 2x. So we're going to actually do this algebra on our power series and see what happens. So the first thing I'm going to do is write down what this would be. I'm going to have the limit as x approaches 0, and I am told to use this as my f of x. So I'm going to have 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial plus dot 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 and I'm not going to write the general term for that so there's my f of x and then after that I've got a minus 1 and then I'm going to supposed to divide all of this by 2x alright so let's go ahead and see if we can do some simplification my 1 here can cancel with this minus 1 out here. And so I'll, all I'm left with is the limit as x approaches 0 of x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial. And that's divided by 2x. Now since I have a monomial on the bottom, I can distribute this basically and, and divide each term by x. I'm going to leave the 2 down there for now. So I'm going to divide an x through. I better put a plus dot 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 because that keeps going. So I'm going to have the limit as x approaches 0 of dividing by x. I'm going to have a 1 and then an x over 2 factorial and then an x squared over 3 factorial and plus a dot 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 and I still have down here a 2. So we've simplified this down and now let's plug in a 0 for all of our x's. If we plug in a 0 for all of these x's all the way out to infinity, every term past the 1 is going to have a 0. All of the terms are going to have a 0 and so what I'm going to have is a 1 half and that is our limit. Hmm, groovy. Alright, so let's do another memorization, a Maclaurin series for cosine, and we want the first four non-zero terms and the general term. So I know from memory that cosine x is equal to 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial. I want four terms, so I need one more, minus x to the sixth over 6 factorial plus dot dot dot. And it's alternating, so negative 1 to the n, I have even powers of x, so it's x to the 2n, and I have even factorials. I need to memorize that. It's going to save you a lot of time. So now we're supposed to use this answer to find the Maclaurin series for g of x equals 1 minus cosine x over x squared. And we have to give the first four non-zero terms and the general term. So it's much, very similar to the one I did up here. I'm going to deal with the numerator first, and then I'll divide through by x squared. So I guess what I'm going to do first is I'm going to write down what is 1 minus cosine x. That's going to be 1 minus this function for cosine that we know converges to cosine for all real numbers. So 1 minus all of this stuff. 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the 4th over 4 factorial minus x to the 6th over 6 factorial plus dot dot dot. And what's going to happen there is my 1 minus 1 will cancel, and this negative will go through and distribute, and it's going to change everything sign. So that's going to equal positive x squared over 2 factorial, and then minus x to the 4th over 4 factorial. I'm running out of room. I'm, I'm going to move down here a little bit. And then plus x to the 6th over 6 factorial, and minus x to the 8th over 8 factorial. I needed four terms. 
So that's what I have up there. I've done the 1 minus cosine x. And now I'm going to divide through by an x squared. So I'm going to divide all of that by x squared. Ah. So let's see what happens. Term by term, if I divide by x squared, I'm going to get 1 over 2 factorial, or 1 half. I'm sorry that this is messy over here, but I hope you understand what I'm doing. And then dividing x to the fourth by x squared leaves me with x squared over 4 factorial. I'm just reducing my powers of x by 2 when I'm dividing by x squared. And then plus x to the fourth over 6 factorial. And then minus x to the sixth over 8 factorial. And then I've got plus dot dot dot. I need the general term. So I'm alternating. And I have x to the 2 in, but then I subtracted 2 because I divided out x squared. I, I took off two powers of x and then divided by 2 in factorial. And I need to figure out if I'm going to start at 0 or 1. If I start at 0, I'm going to get x to the 0, I'm going to get x to the negative 2, and that's not a polynomial. So I need to really start at 1. If I start at 1, I'm going to get x to the 0 power, which is 1 over 2 factorial, which is what I have here. So since I'm starting at 1, I need this to be n plus 1 so that my first term is positive. Now it says I'm supposed to use this answer to approximate this value. And this is why we have Taylor polynomials. I'm not sure that I can, I can do this for you. I could not integrate this because I could not find an antiderivative. At least I don't know if I could or not. It looks messy. But I can use the Taylor polynomial instead of this messy function and integrate that. It's much easier to integrate powers of x than try and do some crazy u substitution that you're not even sure is going to work or not. And on top of that, we're going to show that this error using the Taylor polynomial is smaller than 1 over 500 because of an alternating series error. So we're going to say that the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 minus cosine t over t squared dt can be approximated by integrating from 0 to 1 our Taylor polynomial or our Maclaurin series. So that's going to be 1 half minus x squared over 4 factorial plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial, or sorry, 6 factorial, and then minus x to the sixth over 8 factorial. And I'm going to keep going, you know, plus dot dot dot. dx. And I'm going to just have to stop at some point to approximate it. And the whole point of this is we want to approximate it so that our error is less than 1 over 500. So let's get an antiderivative and see how far we really need to go. So my antiderivative is 1 half x minus x cubed over 3 times 4 factorial. And then plus x to the fifth over 5 times 6 factorial. And then minus x to the seventh over 7 times 8 factorial. And let's see if we've gone far enough. Now remember, if we have an alternating series, whose terms are decreasing in magnitude and they approach zero, we know that our error is always less than the first omitted term. And I'm going to be plugging what into these? I'm going to be plugging in values of x between zero and one. I hope I've gone far enough. So if I plug in a one, this term will be one half. Well, one half is not less than one over 500. If I plug in a 1 for the second term, I'm going to get 1 over 3 times 4 factorial. Now, 4 factorial is 24 times 3 is 72, so that's not less than 1 500th. If I plug in a 1 into the third term, I'm going to have 1 over 5 times 6 factorial. Now, 6 factorial is 720. 720 times 5 is, I think, 3510, I get uh, 3600 maybe. And that's much less than 1 over 500. So here is, this term right here is going to need to be my first omitted term. So I am going to use just the integral for the first two terms. 1 half x minus x cubed over 3 times 4 factorial is as far as I need to go. Because that next term, when plugging in 1, that next term is actually smaller, way smaller than 1 over 500. So I'm going to go from 0 to 1 here. So I'm going to get 1 half minus 1 over 3 times 4 factorial. We already said it's 72. Plug the top number in first, and then minus the plug the bottom number in, 0 minus 0. And so that is 70, 
36 over 72 minus 1 over 72 is 35 over 72. And I know that my error is my first, less than my first omitted term. which would be, I'm plugging in values between 0 and 1, so plug in 0, we just get 0. If I plug in 1, my first omitted term is, would be 1 to the 5th over 5 times 6 factorial, which equals 1 over 5 times 720, which that is 3600, which is less than 1 over 500. So there is me, my explanation, my justification. I just need the first two terms. So this right here, is the an approximation to the area under the curve of or the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 minus cosine t over t squared using a Taylor polynomial which is really not that difficult to use and on top of that I know that this value is within 1 500th of the actual answer the actual my error is actually less than this so that's actually pretty close that's pretty cool that's why Taylor polynomials are one of my favorite things so I guess I will see you guys tomorrow